Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Pretoria has penned uh, a letter about using the term fake news and why we should not be referring to it as that, but rather calling it what it is, and that is misinformation and distortion. Uh, Professor Tawana Kupe joins us now for more on this. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this afternoon. So it's an age-old thing. Why is it a problem now? Uh, thank you, Didi, and thank you to your viewers. It's not a pre it's an age old thing, yes, but it has gained such a momentum and impact that we now have something called fake news. And in my book, if it's fake, it's not news. It's so big that today it distorts major political processes around the world. And people use it in all sorts of backgrounds. Even in the COVID uh, context, remember, COVID-19 context, there were a lot of WhatsApp videos and other text messages on WhatsApp and on Facebook, claiming false cues, claiming, sending all the wrong information, claiming vaccines and all of that. It's so big now that it's very harmful. And why is it big now? It's because it can be spread on mobile digital devices and on social media at their faster speed and sometimes reaching more people than even your channel can reach. And speaking on that, uh, you also note the funding and financing of news outlets uh, has m perhaps made this uh, even worse? Yes, absolutely. I think what has happened over the years, process started in the 70s and into the 80s with a heavy commercialization and concentration of media. What do I mean by that? There are fewer and fewer media outlets owned by fewer and fewer people. All of them roughly, and news or media is always a business. But when the business side overwhelms the journalistic side, especially, it compromises the ethics. But also what happens is that commercially minded media owners often downscale the newsroom and generalize the newsroom. But this has happened at the same time that digital technologies have become ubiquitous. In other words, they are in everybody's hands. And people can, are now reporters in their own right, who have no journalistic training, no ethics, and also, in a sense, are competing with the media that is declining. So what that simply does, it, 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 um, it tilts the balance towards those who produce lies, distortions, misrepresentations, and propaganda over what should be tried, tested, capable media with all of the resources, basing themselves on real facts that are researched, that are fact-checked, that are evidence-based. You speak of the dwindling state of news outlets and newsrooms. Uh, it's tough times uh, for news outlets, a number uh, of them closing down, choosing to go uh, digital. So what then, you know, is done? Because also these days, like you mentioned in the beginning, that everybody has a cell phone and anyone can be a journalist pretty much. Yeah. So I think, yes, I think that that, that, that is the dangerous thing. Even this article we're talking about now, in, on your channel, cases of you and your, your channel, is that it's actually, if you wanted to read it online, it's behind a paywall. In other words, you have to pay in order to read it. So, so it's not accessible to the generality of the public. And as you alluded to, I think at least 500 journalists were being retrenched in the middle of the lockdown. And there's even a, 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 a solidarity fund to try and rescue them, which won't help. But they will no longer be doing you know, credible journalism as we want. So what perhaps ought need to happen in this space is the following. One, the reason why a false information lies and distortions proliferate is not only a dwindling of the number of media platforms, it's also the fact that on our side, on the academics and in, in academic institutions that produce evidence-based, fact-checked information, we do not move as fast as, uh, as, uh, as the, the fakers, if you like. So I think now we're trying, what we'll do in the universities is also to produce information accessible to the public in the manner in which I wrote this article over and above the books and the general articles with the a sophisticated complex language that is needed for, for academic languages. And also put that out in platforms that are free and spaces that are actually free. The Conversation Africa does that. A, a, which is also based here in Johannesburg, translating academic work into, they've done a lot around COVID-19 and, uh, and related matters, and also done a lot during a, a, a electoral campaigns, because many electoral campaigns now are based on this so-called fake news, which is lies, distortions, and so on. 
We need also to rebuild media organizations. Organizations like the SABC ought to have adequate resources to be able to employ credible journalists producing information news on a large number of platforms. SABC anyway needs to move from analog to digital and have even more channels, if you like. Then also we need to teach critical media literacy and information literacy from a very young age. Remember, the young ones are holding cell phones as well these days and have access to all sorts of digital platforms. What with everybody going into online teaching and learning? There's more exposure to digital platforms, but in those platforms, fact-checked, verified uh, information that is really empowering is competing with all of the lies, the distortions, and the misrepresentations. So, Prof, when somebody like Donald Trump simply dismisses something as fake news, uh, you don't follow that lead as a journalist? No, no, you shouldn't, because it's not. if it's fake, it's not news. News does not have a surname. News <laughs> is new. And it is fact-based, evidence-based, verified, and the person who produces it is verifiable and is subject to ethical codes and, and regulations. So the minute we give a news some surnames, false news, fake news, and so on, we create a category which be, takes a life of its own. And as you can see, fake news has taken a life on its own. Donald Trump, by the way, calls fake-based news. That's verified and checked. He calls it fake news. And, and also, this can be very confusing to the generality of the public. Unlike you and me, I'm a trained as a PhD in media media studies and journalism, I'm a professor of the, all of that. But the ordinary member of the public is not able to distinguish a fake news from, 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 from this, uh, this uh, thing with the same name called fake news, which is realized distortions and, la and, and misinformation from fact-based verifiable stuff. News does not have a surname. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Professor Tawana Kupe is the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Pretoria.